She came from a British theatrical family. Although she was not interested in the theater, she didn't feel it suited her personality. And she saw herself more as a writer and journalist. She came with her father to Philadelphia to do Shakespearean readings. And they went up and down the coast. And uh, she was wooed by many suitors. And she married, married a Philadelphian named Pierce Butler. And uh, that was a, um, a poor match. Um, he must have imagined a traditional wife. And she was a very independent, worldly woman, having traveled the stage and music circuit in uh, England and Europe, and now the United States. Um, but the bigger complexity from England, she was an abolitionist. At that time, England in 1832 was way ahead of the United States. And her husband inherited plantations in the South um, that had over 800 enslaved people. She insisted on going with him when he went to visit the plantations. And she probably was considered a, a nuisance at best, probably a troublemaker. Um, she was interested in bettering um, the lot of sick people, of um, women who had delivered babies and giving them a little bit more time to rest and recover before they were sent out in the fields again. And she wrote Journal on a Georgia Plantation. And she didn't publish it as she was working through the complexities of uh, her difficult marriage and they had two children. Um, but they were divorced then. And at the beginning of the Civil War, she was back in England and she did allow it to be published. And in some ways, it was seen as somewhat of an emotional plea, like Uncle Tom's Cabin, that helped tip Britain's consideration of involvement in the Civil War. Um, because there were some people in England um, who either romanticized the South and the gentry on the plantations and the myth of happy slaves. Um, and there were other people who saw the importance of the cotton trade to England's uh, economy. It continued to come back and forth um, between England and the United States, and she continued well into her later years to do Shakespeare readings. She was known as differentiating the voices and bringing the characters out um, in full recognition and a number of the people of her time that kept biographies, poets, and writers uh, praised her for her abilities with that. The other piece of both theater and a little bit of a, a women's theme is this proclamation here. It's from Charles II, newly restored king, to William Davenant to open up theater in London. It allows women for the first time to play the role of women on the stage, as Fanny did to some acclaim. You're probably familiar that young men dressed up as women.